Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make yourself comfortable. We have a lot to talk about. If you've been following Tesla, Elon Musk, and Twitter, I'm sure you've heard a lot of noise. A lot of stuff is going on, especially in respect to Tesla stock. And one of the biggest theories that I'm hearing is that the Twitter acquisition by Elon Musk is actually having some negative impacts on Tesla stock. I've poked around a lot in my own community in the last few weeks here just to test that sentiment. And it does seem like everybody's quite split. It's like 50-50. However, there's one very interesting point in this whole thing, and I'll use a clip from my conversation with Gary Black and Alexandra Mertz about a couple weeks ago on this very topic. If Elon comes out, say, I don't know, in the, in the next month or two, I don't know how realistic it is, and he says, hey, guess what? Twitter has it, it just posted its first profitable month in, I don't know, freaking 10 years. Do you think that helps Tesla stock? Absolutely. Because that would mean that the advertisers are not leaving at the rate that, you know, we skeptics believe they are. That would mean that or that he's getting new advertisers in because the the um, you know the number of eyeballs the MDAUs are going up and so new advertisers are coming in because they want to be part of this. And here's a follow-up tweet from Gary Black which actually prompted me to put this video together. This was tweeted earlier today. If Elon Musk were to come out today and announce that Twitter was now cash flow positive after the 50% plus decline in cash costs and expenses, all the criticism of Elon Musk and Twitter would stop immediately. Let the genius work his magic. If you want to watch the whole discussion, I have a link for that in the description below as well as a card here somewhere on this video. And honestly, this tweet really resonated with me and I really think this is an accurate take. Number one, this would imply there would be no more sales of stock. During the last call that Elon Musk had with his Twitter employees, he made it very clear that the last time he sold stock was to ensure Twitter was going to be alive. And thus, removing that variable obviously will have a positive impact on the stock. Secondly, this will be another reinforcement that Elon Musk actually knows what he's doing. And lastly, if he builds a platform that actually is going to make a lot of people a lot of money, none of this will matter. And a couple ways I think about this is Jeff Bezos and Amazon. Who actually likes Jeff Bezos? I'm sure he's a great guy, but he has such a negative picture in the media, yet literally everybody uses Amazon. And in the latest example is the Qatar World Cup. There is a lot of human rights issues with that World Cup, but every time you turn it on, what do you see? Advertisers galore. So then the question becomes, how realistic is it for Twitter to make money here in the short term? Let's go ahead and run some numbers. This is the last public record of Twitter's quarterly earnings report, which will have all the numbers we need pre-Elon before he made any changes. The two boxes I want us to focus on are revenue for the last quarter, which is the first first red block. And then the second red block is the total costs and expenses. The first block minus the second block will give us how much money the company actually made or lost. As of the last public filing, Twitter lost $343 million in Q2 of 2022. So let's go ahead and start calculating some of the savings that Twitter will get from headcount reduction. Here's a variety of the most popular jobs at Twitter, and the average is somewhere around $100,000, maybe $110,000. However, the cost of the employer is going to be significantly higher than that salary because of healthcare and other perks. Typically, this number is around 20% higher. And so the average Twitter employee, I'm going to peg at $120,000 per year. Before Elon bought the company, Twitter was roughly at 7,500 people. Unless you live under a rock, you know that Elon immediately did a 50% headcount reduction. And in addition, there was an additional round of layoffs from his hardcore work email, which is roughly 1,200 additional heads. And so if we reduce the initial headcount by 50% and remove another 1,200 people, this will make Twitter's new headcount about 2,500 people. This totals to a 4,950 headcount reduction. And at $120,000 each per year, that's roughly $594 million saved yearly or about $149 million saved quarterly, which is that yearly number divided by four. So that's one immediate savings that Twitter has incurred, about $149 million in headcount. If you're enjoying this content, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the algorithm show this to more people. Thank you very much. Next, let's analyze R&D. And again, from Twitter's last earnings report, you can see that research and development was roughly $454 million in the second quarter of 2022. As a comparison of another Elon Musk company, let's look at Tesla. Tesla's research and development is $733 million per quarter on revenues of $21,400,000,000. If we compare Tesla's R&D to their revenue, roughly 3% of their revenue is used for R&D. And from Twitter's earning report, we know their revenue is roughly $1.17 billion a quarter. And so if Elon were to run Twitter just like Tesla, this implies that Twitter should have an R&D budget of about 35 million. And this really highlights just how much waste there was at Twitter. Another crazy comparison here is Tesla and Meta or Facebook. Tesla spends about $2.5 billion per year on R&D and Meta spends upwards of 30 
billion dollars. This is what Tesla is so good at. It's operational leverage. And there is no reason why Twitter wouldn't operate in the same exact manner. And so this means that Twitter will undergo an R&D savings of roughly $420 million. If we add up those two savings from headcount and R&D, this totals up to $568.5 million per quarter. And if we compare this to how much Twitter lost in the last quarter, which was roughly $343 million, this means that if Twitter didn't lose any revenue since Elon took it over, they would actually be making roughly $225 million per quarter instead of losing $343 million. But it's unlikely that Twitter's revenue, which is mostly ads, has stayed the same. Let's go ahead and walk through some scenarios. On the last quarterly earnings, Twitter reported $1.17 billion in revenue as of Q2 of 2020. 2022. If we assume a 20% revenue reduction since Elon took it over, this means that under the new improved cost structure, Twitter would lose roughly $10 million per quarter or basically break even. Now, if we assume a much larger reduction, which is kind of the number that's been thrown around, 50% reduction in revenue, under the new cost structure under Elon Musk, this implies a $364 million loss per quarter. However, it's very important to highlight here that that number is not that different versus the number Twitter was reporting in Q2 of $343 million. So even if Twitter were to lose 50% of its ad revenue, it's very likely that under the new cost structure, Twitter is basically exactly the same company from a profitability perspective. But there are levers that are being pulled by Elon Musk and the Twitter team that are going to increase revenue. And the one that's most public is Twitter's blue check mark for $8 per month per person. Twitter's current user base is roughly 250 million people globally. And to try and gauge what percentage of that user base is going to buy a check mark, I just put out a poll on my Twitter account, what percentage of Twitter will purchase a blue check mark? And I was honestly quite surprised by the results. A lot of people feel that a lot of people will actually buy the blue check mark. I'm going to use 5% adoption of blue check mark on 250 million people, which is roughly 12.5 million users. And so if we take this 12.5 million users times $8 per month times three months per quarter, it adds up to $300 million in revenue per quarter. And if we take this additional revenue and add it to the current Elon must cost structure with the 50% reduction in revenue, Twitter would only be losing about $64 million per quarter versus the original $343 million. The $64 million quarterly loss will be offset by 1% increase in blue check marks or an 8% user base growth if the ad revenue is equivalent to the number of users on the platform. And so what this tells me is that Twitter is probably really, really close to at least breaking even. I would not be surprised at all if Twitter achieved this by say January or February of next year. And of course, the biggest question becomes, will Twitter actually get there? And I would love to hear your opinion. What do you think about this? How are you thinking about the impact of Twitter on Tesla? Or do you think this is completely irrelevant and it doesn't matter? I would love to hear your thoughts. Please drop them in the comment section below. If you'd like to talk about this or other topics on my private Discord, consider becoming a patron by using the Patreon link in the description below. You can also support the channel by becoming a member right here on YouTube. And if you'd like to support the channel by purchasing some merch like the one I'm wearing, right now. The links for that in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.